Okay, so the ingredients uh, that we're going to start with, this looks like stuff that most of us probably have in our cabinets at home. So we have kosher salt, we have garlic cloves, okay. a little olive oil, black pepper, cumin, some apple cider vinegar, a little bit of uh, lemon juice, parsley, green onion, and cilantro. All right, so very basic ingredients. And then what are we doing with these? These help prepare the meat, yeah? Yes, pretty much that's the marinade that we're gonna use to set it in the fridge overnight. It's heavily salted, so that salt penetrates the pork and gives it the, the traditional flavor. Okay, so why don't I, since I don't have gloves on, I'll deal with the spices and, uh, and with the herbs here. Tell me what to do. So first of all, we're gonna start off with the garlic and add that in there. Oh, that's a lot of garlic. It's heavily, heavy garlic, and then the salt. It's also a lot, a lot of salt. Okay. Now you wanna start mashing that in there because the coarseness of the salt and the garlic helps you, helps you muddle it. Oh, okay, got it. So, and fresh garlic, I mean, there's no substitute for it. Some people buy the prepackaged stuff, you know, and it ages in your fridge, it gets a little mushy. It, it gets real weak in flavor, so you never wanna do that. You might as well just peel the cloves. So you like the bite of a fresh garlic. That's Man, this smells good. Okay, Chris, what's next? Next after that, you wanna add a little bit of oil, and that's gonna help you pestle it a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna turn this up just so our, our viewers at home can see that. So you're trying to get pretty much kind of like a slurry type consistency in there. Man, this is a workout. So then after you're there, a little bit more, we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the spices. Some okay, black some pepper, black pepper. A little bit of cumin. And, and then get that, work that really in there. What if someone doesn't have a mortar and pestle at home? If you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can just throw it all in a blender, pulse it two or three times, and you don't have to go through all this work. Why couldn't you have brought a blender today? No, I'm kidding, I'm enjoying myself, this is fun. Um, okay, so you could so, use a blender if so needed. So once that's a little more puree, we're gonna add our herbs in there. Oh, get, dude, this smells so good. It really, I feel like it's like opening up my pores. This is awesome. The whole okay. point of the mortar and pestle is to get all the uh, all the oils out and Got release it. them in our mix. And that's why, I mean, you see a lot of people with, with herbs, like a bartender will always like smack the herb to get the oil to come out. Don't you love that my point of reference is at the bar? <laughs> um, okay, so I, I'm continuing to do this. And this looks like a pretty well mashed consistency, Chris. Oh, sorry. It's all good. All right. So then after you get that, we're gonna have a product done like this. It's already, this is one that I already did in the blender before we got here. So that's what this It should look into. like this once you put in the blender. It's like a green pasty. So it's almost like a pesto consistency. consistency. Yes. Okay, great. So next, when you get the pork, and I've already pre-peeled this one back to make it a little bit easier, we wanna go ahead and slid the skin out because if you put this directly with, on the skin, that flavor's not gonna penetrate the meat. It's just gonna stay on the outside. Okay. So we wanna go ahead and peel this back as much as possible and leave like a flap so then we can cover it back on top. Got it, okay, so you don't want it fully so, disconnected. And you just wanna pull it back little by little and then just slice across the line okay. a few times. And we only have about a minute left. I know, it goes by lightning quick. So the final things we'll do is we wanna go ahead and like inject holes right across. So you're just going straight down then straight into down. that pork and shoulder. And don't jam it in there. The last thing you wanna do is break the tip of your knife and mess somebody's weekend up. Okay. So once we get that, we'll get our, our uh, mixture. Okay. Rub it all across. And we're gonna try to really work it in there. So you're gonna massage that in. On the, on the bottom meat and on top of the skin. Once that's done, we'll get the garlic cloves and we're gonna put about 10 of them through the different holes. Through those holes that you just made? Yes. Okay, got it. So, so the garlic goes into those pre-cut holes, folding over the fold skin. Fold it, rub it, rub it through again. We go ahead and pass it to, to a metal pan. You wanna wrap it in foil. And you wanna make sure that the foil doesn't cover the top because the foil will stick to the skin if it's touching directly. Got it, okay. And then pop it in the oven. Okay, so while you're popping it into our oven over there, that's okay, we can TV time, things move by lightning quick, Chef Christopher. So this is the finished product here, and when you've served it, what, what is around the edges here? What are so you So right here, these are traditional Caribbean dishes. Like right here we have arroz con gris, which is a Cuban rice and beans. It's black beans and rice with peppers. We have yuca that we serve across all three of the, the islands. Tostones, which is a fried mashed plantain that refried again. And then we have some amarillos, which are the sweeter plantains that we crisp up on, oh, a, on a pan. Plantains, can't pass that up. Chris, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for the lightning round cooking lesson. That smells delicious. And folks, if you would like more information on Chef Christopher, visit the Scene on Houston Life section on our website. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Looks delicious.